Yeah, so my son and I were up in the living room at the back of our house. Um, and <laughs> it was about 6.53, I think, is when I noticed it um, on my phone. But there was just this deep, loud boom, and it rattled our windows, and we... I froze. I don't think my son... I think my son said something about thunder, but I, I knew it wasn't thunder. Um, and I just froze for a second and then grabbed him and ran to a more secure area of the house. Um, and called 911, talked to the dispatch for a while about you know what I heard, and said it was a deeper boom than a transformer exploding or um, a backfire. No, 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 no. It wasn't anything anything like that. So that was just out of nowhere. It made me really nervous and scared. Um, to be honest, just a little unsafe um, based on the fact that they don't know if this was a specifically targeted person or if it was a random act. Um, either way, it, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's devastating. Um, a lot of people, especially around the house, it's going to feel unsafe for a little while, um, but yeah, unsafe hurt a lot. Okay. All right. Good morning. Thank you all for coming out here today. I want to give you an update on the incident that we are investigating. First, I want to uh, identify a few folks up here. I have uh, John Skada, who is the assistant special agent in charge for the FBI Austin, and I have Brian Garner who is the resident agent in charge for Austin's ATF branch as well. We've got a uh, multi-operational uh, uh, investigation going on with our federal partners here. This all started uh, this morning at a, with a call at 6.55 this morning. It came in as a nature unknown urgent call and we received several calls to our 911 dispatch center that there had been an explosion. Uh, the callers were reporting an explosion and they also reported that there was a victim that appeared to have traumatic injuries as well. Again, that call came in at 6.55 this morning and we assigned units at 6.57 and had them en route. We had the first medical units arrive on scene at 7.03 and they did find someone who was, had experienced uh, traumatic injuries from the explosive event that we're investigating behind us. That individual was transported to a local hospital and succumbed to their wounds at 7.48 this morning, pronounced deceased at a local area hospital. APD units arrived on scene, and again, it was apparent that we had an explosive incident that had occurred, and what you're seeing behind us is a very detailed investigation into that incident. What we know right now is that some type of a device exploded at this residence this morning, and again, causing traumatic injuries that took an individual's life. We have no information right now that makes us believe this is anything beyond an isolated incident, but that's why we have all of our partners here to ensure that it is not. I know you all will ask whether this is terrorism related. Again, there is no information that we have right now to believe this is anything other than an isolated incident, but we're working diligently to understand this incident and to understand why it had occurred. So we have our partners from the FBI, from the ATF, from the postal inspectors, as well as our own bomb squad and fire department working on this incident. It is going to take us uh, quite a while here today to work through this scene, to do the post-blast analysis, as well as to do an investigation into the death that occurred here today on top of that. So again, we're in the very early stages of this investigation. Everything we have is preliminary at this time. I am gonna open it up here for questions in just a minute, but I do want you to realize again, there's not a lot of additional information we can give out based on the stage of the investigation we're in. But I again want to emphasize, based on what we know right now, we have no reason to believe this is anything beyond an isolated incident that took place at this resident, and no reason to believe that this is in any way linked to a terrorist act, but we are not making any assumptions. We're conducting a thorough investigation to rule that out. Well, I've got a, uh, the, the, the assistant special agent in charge, but we partner with the FBI and with the ATF. Again, we're not making any assumptions. 
uh, that this that this is anything other than what we believe it to be, but we won't leave any stone unturned. So the FBI is here in case we need their assistance in ruling out anything based on part of a larger uh, scheme. Do you think Again, this is, this is an ongoing dynamic investigation, and part of the investigation is what was the cause of the explosion, what type of a device may it have been, and so we cannot confirm at this time what caused the explosion. We're very early on in the investigation. We do have all of our experts from both the federal agencies and here locally with the Austin Police Department, and that is one of the very early things that we want to confirm is what was the cause of the explosion. When you say you don't have any What we don't see here is any indication right now that this is anything part of a larger scheme. What we do look at is the people that are involved in the incident and what might have caused this to happen here today. Based on the early stages of the investigation, we do not see anything that makes us believe this is part of a larger operation or anything related to uh, a terrorist act. When you say it's not terrorism, is this, um, are y'all looking at this like a homicide investigation in any way? Like someone put this device there? Yes, as you will also see, the police department's homicide unit is here, and we are investigating this at a homicide because we do have an individual that died as a result of this incident. So it is, at this stage, is believed to be a homicide, and we're trying to understand what led up to it and what the device was that may have caused it. We saw dogs out here earlier, people closing off this whole area. What are they looking for? You know, one of the first things you always want to make sure is that you have a secure area in which we can all work. And so those dogs that you saw were part of our uh, explosive ordnance team, our bomb units, and they're just making sure that, number one, we locate any evidence that might have escaped the immediate area due to the explosive blast, as well as making sure the rest of the scene is secure, and we have done so. Have you identified any person of interest? No, this is the very early stages of the investigation, and again, we have not made way towards any, uh, any identification. I need you to talk about the actual um, device that may have exploded, but since the postal inspector is here, can you talk at all or confirm at all that the device came in the mail or had anything to do with the delivery to the home? That again, in an abundance of caution, trying to understand this, we reach out to all of our providers that deliver mail in this area, both the U.S. Postal Service and those that do it privately, because that is one of the things we want to know is, was there a package delivered to this residence in the past several days? Because we still are trying to work to understand what happened, what the device was, and where it came from. So that's why we bring in our federal partners also from the Postal Service, and we work with other private delivery services to understand whether or not there were packages delivered to this residence. And that's underway right now, trying to make that determination. Was there a reason why a dog was removed from the premises? Uh, it's probably the dog from the residence, I believe, and, and we're going to obviously go into this residence and search this residence, and we don't want to have, if it's a family dog, we don't want to have them out in the neighborhood escaping. Last question. Was anybody else there at the time with any other injuries? There are no other injuries related to this incident. It did happen on the front porch. Uh, yeah, from the evidence that we see right now, we do believe that the explosion occurred on the front porch. Thank you. So Austin police are out here responding to a deadly explosion in East Austin. This is on Old Fort Hill Drive off MLK. Um, this is the reported second deadly explosion in about two weeks. The other one happened on March 2nd up in Northeast Austin in the 1100 block of Haverford Drive. I'm here at the intersection of Walworth and Old Fort Hill Drive. There's a heavy EMS uh, fire and police presence. The FBI is also um, at the scene here investigating. What we know so far is that it appears that a package exploded this morning and killed a teen and left another woman injured. Um, no IDs on those people yet, but again, it's the second such explosion in about two weeks, so investigators are looking into whether these might be connected. Uh, we haven't really had a briefing out here from Austin police yet, 
uh, but we think that we're going to learn something or a little bit more throughout the morning. Uh, police have blocked off traffic here at Walworth and Old Fort Hill. They're also kind of down the street combing the neighborhood, investigating and seeing what's going on. folks that I have here with me. I have uh, John Scada, who is a special agent in charge uh, for the FBI here locally in Austin. And I have uh, ATF special agent uh, Alan Derrick, who's the resident agent in charge out of San Antonio, along with members of the Austin Police Department's executive team. Uh, we had an incident occur this morning in the 4800 block of Old Fort Hill Drive. Uh, residents called in and uh, reported that there had been some type of an explosion that had occurred in the residence. Again, this was reported at 6.44 in the morning, and they reported that there were two people that had been injured in this explosion. So we immediately had police officers responding, along with the Austin Fire Department and Austin Travis County EMS services. Upon arrival, the, off the police officers, the EMS technicians and firefighters went to the residence, and what we found was an explosion had occurred inside the residence. There were two people that had been injured, one of those persons uh, has died of their injuries. Uh, we believe this person to be a 17-year-old male. Uh, the other was an adult female who was transported to a local hospital with what we believe to be non-life-threatening injuries. What we understand at this point is that early this morning, one of the residents went out front and there was a package on the front doorstep. They brought that package inside the residence and as they opened that package, both victims were in the kitchen and the package exploded, causing the injuries that resulted in the young man's death and the injuries to the adult female. This uh, incident is being investigated right now by the Austin Police Department's Homicide Division as a homicide. What you see behind us is a very strong representation from both the FBI along with the ATF. We have the United States Postal Service out here with us again on this investigation, given that this was a package that was on the doorstep. What we can tell you right now is the United States Postal Service has reviewed their records and that we do not believe that this was at all a delivery that came through the Postal Service. And we're checking with our other package delivery services as well. But the initial indication from them is that this was not a package that was delivered by any mail service. Uh, so it uh, was placed on the front doorstep. The incident is very similar to the incident that occurred in Austin back on March 2nd. And if you'll remember, that incident also occurred in the morning hours when uh, the victim in that case went out front and found a package on their front steps that exploded, uh, causing that in individual's death. That, in that case was being investigated as a suspicious death. It is now being reclassified and is now a homicide investigation as well. We are looking at these incidents as being related based on similarities that we have seen in the initial evidence that we have on hand here today compared to what we found on the scene of that explosion that took place uh, a week back. Uh, we are looking at anything that might tie these two together, but again, what we've seen on the initial review of this scene, and we're very early on in the investigation, there are similarities that we cannot rule out that these two incidents are in fact related. So with that, I wanna put out some safety messages. First of all, uh, we, can, we want the community to be aware that this has happened and obviously there is the possibility that these are related so if you find any suspicious packages on your front porch at your residence do not handle them but instead call 911 and let us come out and take a look at those packages and ensure that they are safe again if you've received a package that you were not expecting that is not from someone that you expected to receive a package from or for some reason gives you cause for concern then call 911 until we've gotten to the bottom of this and cleared these cases. Again, we believe that the possibility that they are related exists, and that's what you see behind us is a very concerted effort between all of the agencies you see represented here today, because we are not going to tolerate this in Austin, 
and you have seen every stop will be pulled out and the federal agencies have all jumped in with us to lend us a hand and to bring this to as quick of a resolution as possible. Um, so we will, uh, we've got the FBI's evidence recovery team is in route along with the ATF's uh, national response team. There will be a very large post-blast investigation that will take place at this residence. Through this investigation, we will gather all the evidence, collect the evidence, and get it into a lab so that it can be analyzed so that we can, again, have this case ready for prosecution once we find the individual or individuals that are responsible for this. So we, again, are in the early stages of this investigation. And as I've said, we do see similarities and believe that these cases are linked at this time. However, we don't know what the motive behind these may be. We do know that both of the homes that were the recipients of these packages um, belonged to African Americans, so we cannot rule out that hate crime is at the core of this, but we're not saying that that's the cause as well. We're just acknowledging and we're looking at any possible motivations that would link these two cases together so that we can put this case together, understanding the victimology, and who might these individuals have known and had in common. So that's the stage of the investigation where we're at now. And again, we are in the early phases. We will be out here most of the day collecting evidence. Uh, as you can imagine, with an explosion such as this, the, uh, the damage is significant and there's a lot of evidence that needs to be collected. So right now, this investigation is being conducted as a joint operation between the Austin Police Department Federal Bureau of Investigation and the ATF all working collaboratively along with our other federal partners to bring this case to a quick resolution. So I'll open it up for questions here in a moment, but again at this point there's not a lot more than we can put out based on the early stages of the investigation where we are. What similarities can you tell us about the packages at this time? So we're not going to go into the specifics of that other than to say that the initial evidence and the initial description that we have received are similar in both cases. So that's what we're looking at, but we're not going to go into the specifics of what those similarities are. Have y'all identified any surveillance video from uh, any of the surrounding neighborhood homes? We're doing a canvas of the neighborhood right now. We are looking at all of the residences that may have external video and that is ongoing. So that will be part of the investigation. Since the March 2nd explosion, Chief, uh, is there anything that investigators have been able to identify about what type of explosive device this was? So we do know what the explosive device was. We're not going to put that out now to protect the integrity of the investigation, but based on the expertise that brings to, that comes to this investigation through not only our bomb squad, but through our federal partners with the FBI and the ATF, we've been able to piece together uh, what we believe the construction of that first IED was, and that's what will take place again here today, is, is reconstructing what happened at this residence. So you also know what the first explosive device was in the first incident, but also not telling us to protect the integrity of the investigation. Correct. <coughs> you can say this is a threat to the public? I, I want the public to be aware and to be cautious because, again, we have two cases that are very similar that have both resulted in a loss of life. And until we find who committed this act and take them into custody, then yes, it is appropriate for residents to be concerned if you receive a package you were not expecting or if it's a package that's not marked appropriately, if it's not from someone that you know and you were not expecting, then it's better to be safe and give us a call and let us come out and take a look at it. Hi everybody, Tony Plaheski here from the Austin American Statesman Newsroom with some breaking news. Austin police confirmed that they have now been dispatched to a second blast this morning um, occurring at a home in southeast Austin. This is the second type of incident of its kind that has happened in Austin this morning. The first one happened at around 645 this morning in East Austin. We know in that case that a 17 year old died and that a woman has also been taken to the hospital. She is being treated for her injuries. Now there is this new case that has happened really within the past 30 to 45 minutes. And what we are being told is that this latest one happened in Southeast Austin, near Riverside Drive in Montopolis. We know that a woman in her 60s, this is according to Austin Travis County EMS, a woman in her 60s has been taken to the hospital and medics are still on that scene right now 
uh, determining whether or not there is a second additional patient. But again, the big news this morning right now is that two blasts have occurred at homes. Uh, Police Chief Brian Manley earlier this morning giving a briefing from that first location saying that law enforcement officials believe that the case this morning, the first case this morning, is in fact connected to a similar case that happened uh, two weeks ago in North Austin. So again, that would bring the total to three of these types of cases that have happened in Austin since March, for, uh, excuse me, since March 2nd. So we are continuing to get additional information, but again, what we can confirm is that police have been dispatched to a new incident in Southeast Austin, a second report of an explosive device being detonated at a home. We will keep you posted. I heard an uh, explosion happen, and as soon as I heard it, I ran outside, climbed my tree and got on top of my roof because I wanted to actually get a good view of what was happening. As soon as I did that, that's when uh, police started piling up on this block right here on Galindo Street. I don't know the people that stayed there, but I know, I know where the house is and I know the address. I wish I could meet the people to see if they're okay, because come on now, like, you got a package and you open it and explode, someone has to be injured. Someone could have died too. What did it sound like? It sounded like two cars hit each other, but I knew it wasn't two cars that hit each other. Like, I'm talking about two cars that go on six miles per hour and hit each other, you know? But I knew it wasn't no, no two cars that hit each other because it shook my house and it shook me, you know? I felt it in my body. Where were you at when, uh, when you heard, heard the uh, I was in my room. I was actually like, uh, like, I was I was actually listening to music. And as soon as I paused uh, the song I was listening to, that's when I heard it. I had my window open. I peeked my head out my window to see where it was. But I, at first I thought I was on the side of my house. But it turns out I was in the back of my house, you know? Uh, and by, from the time that you heard the explosion to the time that you saw the police come, approximately how how quick was that i say five to like seven minutes here in austin texas where an explosion has happened in a peaceful quiet neighborhood around 9 p.m at night which sent FBI and ATF agents out here in massive numbers, bomb units, bomb dogs. We're here with one of the neighbors out here. Now, ma'am, what do you know about what happened here tonight? Uh, we just heard that there was two explosions and uh, that there was a tripwire attached to a for sale sign on a house that wasn't for sale and that they were injured, got uh, some nails, um, and we've heard that they're doing uh, they're in stable condition at the hospital, and then we've been just trying to ask more information, and it just seems like more and more FBI and uh, uh, people are still pouring in here. Now, what was the FBI asking you for help with? They wanted to know about cameras that might be pointed towards the street, so we were trying to identify places where we knew there might be cameras that would see vehicles or people. So we were letting them know of the ones that we knew around in the neighborhood. Now, you said you spoke with one of the neighbors here that didn't want to be on camera, and, and she said that uh, one of the neighbors confirmed he heard the explosion? Uh, yes, uh -huh. we've, heard, we've talked to a couple of people, residents here, and they talked to other people that lived on the street that heard the explosion. But I personally haven't talked to anybody that lives on the street. Now so, the street is down over here where yeah, just about this a happened. Block away. Just yeah, about a block it's a, away. Yeah, a block around the corner. And um, most of the streets in here kind of dead end. They just kind of go into cul-de-sacs. So you can't freely really move around the neighborhood. Are you worried that there might be more bombs and things in the neighborhood? Well, I'm concerned because from what I'm hearing, it's different than the packages that were put on porches. Uh, it's worrisome that there was, uh, I guess, a rumor, so far as far as we know, of a tripwire that, uh, uh, that that is what was uh, triggered the explosions. So, and, and that two young boys were riding, or young men were riding their bikes, so. We're just uh, wondering if we can get some more information.
And we talked to the FBI and they said they're going to be here all night, so. And we, we 
We've obviously updated that a little bit. In the past, we've been talking about the importance of not touching suspicious packages, not moving packages, not handling packages. The belief that we are now dealing with someone who's using trip wires shows a higher level of sophistication, a higher level of skill. And so now what we are imploring the community to do, if you see any suspicious object or item that looks out of place, do not even approach it, but instead call 911 and report that to the police department so we can send folks out to check that and ensure that it is safe. So again, do not approach these suspicious items, anything that you may see, whether it be a bag, a backpack, a box. And again, this is why we have avoided giving specific descriptions of the prior three devices because it was never confirmed that that would be the design that this suspect or suspects would stick with. So that's the important message today to this community is make sure that you are safe and make sure you contact us if you see something that looks suspicious or that looks out of place. Again, we want to ensure the safety of this neighborhood and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can as we work through this investigation to do so. With that, um, I'm going to ask Agent, uh, Special Agent Milanowski uh, to come up and talk a little bit about tripwires. All right, we want to talk a little bit about this because this device is a little more sophisticated than what we've seen to date. Um, all the evidence from the previous devices are at the ATF National Laboratory, as will this evidence. But Tripwire is a victim actu actuated switch, literally uses some kind of wire, and when there's pressure put on that wire, it activates or detonates the device. So it could be either from tripping over it or picking up the package. Any tension that's put on that wire, sometimes it's thin filament, sometimes it's fishing line. But like the chief said, we're even more concerned now that people see something suspicious, they just stay away from it altogether and contact law enforcement. Because if they move that package or if they step on that trip wire, it's likely to detonate. So we want to put that information out to the public and make sure that if you see a bag, a suitcase, a box, anything that's unusual and not normally in that area, call law enforcement. We're bringing in extra explosive detection canines in order to be able to uh, check out all those packages uh, and make sure the public stays, stays as safe as possible. Thank you. Highlight uh, obviously, this is very concerning to us. The FBI has brought in over 350 special agents to work here. It's an unprecedented response to Austin. We're here to support the Austin Police Department. I want to highlight again with these packages with this tripwire, this changes things. It's more sophisticated, it's not targeted to individuals. We're very concerned that with tripwires, a child could be walking down a sidewalk and hit something. So, it's very important that here in Austin, if anyone sees any suspicious you do not go near that package you immediately call law enforcement so you can get bond techs out there to deal with the suspect package additional teams have been brought to bear here in austin with the area police departments the state bomb squad the federal bomb squads are here we're bringing in extra bomb techs as we speak to make sure that we can handle every suspicious call that happens here not just in austin but in the surrounding communities as well so it is very important that we stay away from anything we consider to be suspicious. I would also like to highlight there's a hundred thousand dollar reward out right now for anyone that can give us information that can lead us to stop the bombings. We need this to stop. We are very concerned that people can get hurt by this just by walking now. We have trip wires. A hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money. And we're hoping somebody knows something and that they can call us and help us stop what's going on. Thank you. The only thing that I'll add before we open it up for questions is we have utilized the reverse 911 system. However, many of you all probably are already aware there was a glitch in the system and it went out across the majority of the city. So we're putting out through social media. Travis Country is the only neighborhood that is affected and Travis Country is the neighborhood that we want to have people stay sheltered in place in their residences until 2 p.m. this afternoon or until we advise further. So with that, we'll go ahead and open up for questions. Chief, Chief, Chief at, what time, at what time are you going to call this domestic terrorism? Well, you know, that's been the question all along is, is this terrorism? Is this hate related? And we're early on in the investigation today. We've only gotten into the preliminary phases. And as the day moves on, that is something that we're going to analyze. We are clearly dealing with what we expect to be a serial bomber at this point based on the similarities between now what is the fourth device 
And again, as we look at this individual and the pattern and, and what we're looking at here, we will have to determine if we see a specific ideology behind this or something that will lead us to partners to make that decision. Well, what, what are y'all doing down there? Right now, the ATVs are here just in case we need to go into this green belt. Again, we're not certain from which direction the suspect or suspects may have entered this area. And so they're here in case we need to get through the wooded area here as part of the evidence collection process. Are police investigating other areas in Austin? Are you canvassing neighborhoods? Assault as a community. The officers that are working in the neighborhoods are paying attention not only for the suspicious packages, but also items that may look out of place. The Department of Public Safety is going to send additional troopers into the Austin area to help us patrol and be visible in the neighborhoods and to help us look for those suspicious items or just to inform the community of where we're at with the investigation. Chief, so, do you, do you really before this, work being done on this. Chief, do you before this latest this one, did y'all work up a, a suspect profile or any kind of um, information about who he was targeting? So, as we mentioned yesterday, we have had a, a large number of tips that have come in through the, the past week and each and every one of those tips gets worked by the teams we described. They come into the command center and they get assigned out to either a team of ATF investigators or FBI investigators or Austin Police Department investigators. So throughout the course of this past week, there were points in time where we had persons of interest because of information that had been provided. And then as we furthered the investigation into those individuals, either their backgrounds, their social media life, things like that, we have run those leads to ground. And at this point, we are following up on a few more. We have had persons of interest um, and we continue to look at a few, but we have not identified a suspect or suspects as of this time. Can you describe how this package was similar? Have you been able to speak with, with, with the, the two latest victims? latest uh, bombing, was the package visible? Is the trip wire visible? I think people might want to know, you know, look out what they should be looking for. Yeah, so as far as speaking to the victims, they're obviously in the hospital receiving care and that's what we're concerned with. We have had initial conversations with them to get an idea of where the device was and the device was sitting um, next to a fence is where we expect it to be. And again, as, as, as uh, Special Agent Melanowski talked about, the trip wire can be a filament wire, can be fishing line, it can be a metal wire. So that's why people just need to pay attention to see if there's a device that is, is, is seated somewhere near because the trip wire would be attached to that device and it would pull on it to then activate. So, so again, that's what we need is, is people paying attention for suspicious objects, bags, boxes, backpacks, anything that just looks out of place, and then especially if they see any type of a wire uh, extruding from that. Is, is, there, is, there, is there anything else at all about similarities, materials, anything? So what we have said to this community from day one, we are going to give you information that keeps you safe. That's why we got on camera at 1.30 in the morning when we felt like there might be a trip wire in play because we didn't want to wait until this morning to put that information out because that's information that helps keep this community safe. The specific components of the bomb, the firing mechanism that these suspects are, the suspect or suspects are using, that doesn't help keep the community safe and that is something that is being kept confidential by, by us and our federal partners to protect the integrity of the investigation. Is it difficult to set these without suicide bombs? Suspects were putting these on specific porches and now, like Special Agent Tone said, it's a little more broad. This can be triggered by anyone. What does that tell you about the person behind it? Well, again, as we said from the very beginning, we were not willing to classify this as terrorism, as hate, because we just don't know enough. And what we have seen now is a significant change from what appeared to be three very targeted attacks to what was last night an attack that would have passed, that would have hit any, a random victim that happened to walk by. So we've definitely seen a change in the method that this suspect or suspect is using. Chief, Chief, you don't know about why the, the victims, suspect is doing they, what they're doing? Were they, were they walking along the sidewalk along the fence and, and came across this, this tripwire? Or were they walking between houses? Can you kind of help paint the picture of how they actually sure. came across what this we, wire? What we believe, and again, this is all preliminary, but what we believe is they were walking either on the sidewalk or the grassy area between the street and the fence. And so they were not walking between houses, but alongside a roadway. Chief, you tried to reach you out to the suspect earlier. Do you think this suspect or suspect still has a message for police? <laughs> well, again, we've, we've opened ourselves up for a message, and that's why we asked him to contact us and gave him phone numbers to contact us at. And again, we won't understand what the motive might be behind this or the reason behind this until we have an opportunity to talk to the suspect or suspects that are involved. So How hard is it? Besides being on the homeless. lookout for, for objects that are suspicious, should people adjust their lifestyle in any way until there's a 
Well, I think people need to be vigilant. People need to pay attention, as we've been saying, um, you know, back back since the past week and a half, is pay attention to your surroundings, pay attention to your neighborhoods. If things look out of place, if there are suspicious persons, call us, let us know what's going on, and that way we can come out and we can look into that to see if it is at all related to what we're having happen in Austin right now, or if it's not, and therefore we can put that to rest. And she said this is sophisticated. This is a sophisticated device. Does the tripwire suggest a, a military background? You know, a tripwire doesn't doesn't necessarily suggest that there's a military background. What it does suggest, though, is that the suspect or suspects that we are dealing with have a higher level of sophistication uh, than, than maybe we initially thought based on them changing their methods to a, a, a more difficult device. Right. Yesterday afternoon, you asked the um, suspect to contact you with their message. Do you think last night was their response? You know, we won't know that until we have an opportunity to talk to the suspect or the suspects, whether or not that was a motive behind this. That's just something we're not going to know. And to that end, again, we will I, I will reach out to the suspect or suspects and ask that you contact us, ask that you reach out to us, communicate with us so that we can put this to an end. There are innocent people getting hurt in this community and it needs to come to a stop. The last thing we want to have is is another injury or another death in our community related to this incident. Chief, what's the relationship between the two the scene to indicate that he wants to talk okay, to you? ATF interviews are going to start right on.